folks, we'll uh, call order our uh, special city council workshop. Uh, are there any public comments that were listed? None. Uh, we're going to change the order of the of the agenda just slightly. Uh, we're going to ask that the uh, Excelsior Building comments um, and update come first. Ms. Stephens, are you uh, reporting on that? Yes. Good. Come right here. And uh, I know there were a number of follow-up activities that uh, uh, the last time we had our had our conversation that uh, you and your and your team were getting together. So tell us a little bit about what uh, what you're doing. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for listening to me again. I can say right now that I was expecting my other team members, Pastor Hammonds and Lorenza Hathorn. They're not here yet, but I hope they'll come because they'll have a follow-up to what I'm saying. Okay. But I can tell you in regard to the, uh, my role is to, set, to look at the Harbor uh, 13C. And we have met, and we have now registered with the state of Oklahoma. Good. So we will be continuing with the process until we complete it. Do you have any idea what, what typically time takes the time, time frame to get that 501c3 no, completed? No, I had contacted uh, Price Curtis, who mm -hmm. was assisting me in this, right. and said that we would probably need that kind of, that kind of schedule, but he hasn't returned my call. I understand now he has another job, and it's kind of keeping kind of, kind of busy, but I know he will. Um, Mr. Mayor, I talked to Price, and he said uh, it's hard to predict with the IRS. Uh, it could be anywhere from two months to 12 months based on, you know, what's going on with them. So uh, it might be a guess as to exactly when the IRS will accept it. Okay. He doesn't see a problem with that. It just see, you know, we don't know the timeline. Okay. So that's according to Price. So, okay. All right. Very good. Um, one of the other <coughs> of that conversation was talking a little bit more about uh, developing a specific plan for the for the building and, and uh, uh, has there been much any more discussion with your group about that? No, no more. You mean the plan for the programs or the plans for the plans for the programs? Program. But it still remains the same so far. Until such time we get it all together to get it really complete, I will give you with any updates that I will have. Okay. But the plans right now sounds pretty solid. I think they sound good, and uh, we can work them. Okay. I got a question. On the 501c3, when you actually submit that, you have narrative and information uh, specifically saying what you're going to use yes, this for. Is it possible to get some of that information? Not tonight. Uh, not tonight, yeah. but in the future. Sure. I'll be that would give us a lot of info as to what you oh, guys are doing. Yeah. Sure. What we would do is to register with the state, then we have to do the 1023, right. your bylaws, which will carry a lot of information. Yeah, and, we, and we should have that. Yeah. So that would help us a lot. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Good. And uh, I think there was some discussion too about the application yes. for the historical uh, designation. Uh, yes, I am working on that. Um, I have all the research done for the historic significance portion, and that part's been drafted. So I need to finish up all the other sections, and I'm estimating uh, two to three months to finish that section and be able to submit it. So the concern the process we're doing. Okay. Um, we have a kind of a ver verbal indication that, that uh, it would have a good chance of being designated. We do have the letter that building. says that they do, uh, the state does feel that it is eligible, which is uh, just a preliminary step. And when we actually submit this paperwork, they can do final determination. And that's a pretty long process once we submit it because they only meet a few times a year and their time schedule is a little hard to tell you right now. Okay. And does that designation have an impact on whether or not the, um, the city can, can sell uh, the, the product, property? No. 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 Okay. It doesn't have any bearing on what you can do with the property. It just um, shows that it's historically significant and is sometimes useful as fundraising grants, that kind of thing. Okay. It's just really a tool. And, and why does it take two or three months to, to complete the application? Um, it doesn't really. It's just that I do I do a lot of other things and I'm only, um, I only do the Historical Society a very little amount of time, about 40 hours a month total, and I work on several other projects. And it's just a matter of crossing all the 
I's, dotting all the T's. There's several sections I haven't written at all yet. Okay. And just making sure everything is by the book so it goes through the process easily. Okay. All right. That's good. Is uh, it for the site or the building? For the, for the significance? For the building. For the building. And um, on the city side, we were doing some research to make sure that uh, actually the city had title of the property, do, I believe. Uh, at Logan County Abstract, do a search. We do have the deed to the city, so the city owns it. It's kind of interesting. It's subject to a mortgage in like 1912 for $2,500. So the interest is probably $50 million by now. <laughs> that. Maybe can I share something else with you that we did since that time we've had the uh, Favor Alumni All School Reunion and I had the opportunity to share uh, what we were talking about here today with them and they're so excited and they are uh, right there they want to know I know it's going to take some money what can we do so I'm telling them that we want to wait on the other one to receive so that they can get credit whatever they want to do. Okay all right good and I believe there are the city has also done uh, some uh, lead paint we, uh, testing. We contracted with EMI, I believe, to do both lead and asbestos <laughs> testing. No and they have now, and nope. today they collected the samples for asbestos, and uh, last week I believe they did the paint. And we should get a uh, report in a week and a half. On all of it? On, on yes. both, both yes. issues? Yes. And in talking to the uh, Working bees that were pulling the samples. I mean, they're knowledgeable. Of, you know, this might be, this might not be, and it sounds like, uh, you know, this is just total preliminary. And you know, but there's one sheet of vinyl when you walk in, and that might, that could have asbestos in it. You know, and then that same flooring, if you will, is in the men's and ladies' restroom. And then there, there's a uh, ceramic. Uh, baseboard going around it's ceramic and uh, they thought that there might be lead in that but even if there is it's probably not uh, uh, just because it's there doesn't mean that that's a dangerous situation like paint that could ship and you can get ingested or inhaled so but we'll have a we should have a final report that we sent to the planning department in uh, about a week and a half and just for clarification the um the lead part of it was actually uh, tested, I'd probably say close to three weeks ago. We were kind of uh, working around the EMI timeline, and if you know anything about their business, they kind of revolve around disasters, and so a lot of different things could pop up. This is just as quickly as what they could get us in for the uh, asbestos. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Do you have anybody else? Uh, no. None not, of your, none not, the rest not, of your team is not, not at this time. Okay. Not at this time. All right. Good. Um, mm -hmm. I think given that we will have some city uh, information available shortly, but the, I think the key element is the 501c3. And we're going to continue to work with that. Okay. And we'll let you, we'll let you move on completion. Okay. I think we we'll, maybe we'll put this on a workshop maybe in a couple months uh, for you to give us an update on where you stand, and maybe you will also have a little bit better indication on the okay. historical application for the building. We will absolutely have the information on asbestos and uh, and the uh, and the letter. Already have that. So let's let's talk for a minute. If it all comes back clean, uh, no asbestos, no lead. Uh, they got the 501c3 going and the whole nine yards. I mean, what do we do then? And I guess that's more of a question for Randall. Uh, I mean, we can't just give the building away. Uh, it would have to go to a vote. I would think. Well, well it's under twenty-five thousand. The value would not have to go and go to a vote because the appraisal we had was under twenty-five thousand. But giving a city asset well, away would. Well, the, the question you you really can't give an asset away, but I think we could work a deal to sell it for a nominal fee, but we would have to put in provisions that we'll have to all agree to and draft whereby it's for historical purposes and your new 501c3 would assume certain responsibilities that the city, even though not the owner, would still 
supervise or have some supervision so that if the 501c3 didn't do what they said they were going to do, we may have a reverter class <coughs> in, the, in the conveyance. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, and another option would be, I think we want it out of our, we don't have the money to fix it up, so we want it out of our care and custodial duties. But a long-term lease might satisfy what you want to do, Evelyn. And, but if we can, if everybody wants to convey it and we can convey it with the proper consideration back to the city and, and the supervision that the city would have on the historical purposes, I think we could. I'm confident that you all work it out. Yeah, well, we'd have to work it out between the city and your 501c3 because everybody, before we, before we did a sale, mm -hmm. you'd have to know what your obligations were and, and uh, understand that if they don't happen in five or six years or even a year, that it might revert back to the city or even 25 years. I, I, uh, I agree with that. I do recollect one other issue, and that was with uh, turning the uh, Air conditioning on in the building, um, I believe that yes, has been accomplished. Yeah, yep. So that will uh, at least minimize any further damage to the building, um, but we still need to move on this as expeditiously as we can. So, uh, I, Thank know you the chair, I know the chair group feels the same way. Oh, sure. Okay. We've come a long ways. Okay. Any other questions by any members of the uh, council here? Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is the uh, is the budget draft. Uh, it was sent uh, out to everybody in their uh, in their I think both in the Dropbox and then maybe also by an attachment to email. Um, it's too large to email, so I, that's why I put it in Dropbox. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Um, this is just a preliminary discussion about the uh, about the budget. Um, this it will be on the on the actual official schedule in September. So right? Yes, the first meeting in September will be the public hearing. Okay. Um, so I guess I will just open it up to anybody that has questions about any of the line items that are on the on the budget. It was. Uh, I think uh, it looked like a good process that was uh, gone through. The product that you've given us, uh, Kim, comparing uh, last year's budget and what was actually spent in the proposed budget is, I think, a, a very nice document. Uh, so I appreciate your efforts and all of your staff's effort in, in putting that together. Uh, I guess I'll just open it up for anybody that has uh, questions on any of the line items. and. Uh, and we have we do have a uh, little bit of a time crunch at 6:30. We need to sure. I'll just, uh, let, I'll just let everyone know. I've reviewed the budget over the last couple of days, and it looks like it's in line with all other municipal budgets that I've I've been able to gather uh, over the years and put together. So again, I want to re reiterate what you stated. Uh, thank you to Kim and the rest of the staff to put these together even before I got here. Uh, so uh, as I go through it uh, over the uh, next couple of weeks. Uh, feel free to go review it yourself. And if you have any detailed questions, uh, let me know, and Kim and I will get together and try to answer those. Uh, then I'll try to have a um, city manager letter that goes along with every budget that has to be submitted to the state of Oklahoma, uh, detailing any uh, other portions that uh, you guys may have asked about, or any other uh, portions of the budget that I see uh, that I want you guys to take a look at, and uh, and we'll go from there. So. Uh, again, more than anything else, it is a balanced budget, uh, which is uh, the state requirement. And um, as I go through it, and as you guys go through it, the next couple weeks we'll learn and grow together, and uh, we'll come to um, a synopsis that hopefully everyone pleases there one in a couple weeks. Okay. You know that's impossible. At, uh, no, but we're going to be here a long time. So <laughs> that uh, for our for our viewing audience, that of course is the voice and uh, and face of our new city manager. Uh, uh, Bruce uh, Johnson, uh, welcome to the team and to our city, uh, and uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing lots from you uh, today and in, and in the future, but uh, again, welcome. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Amazing to put that budget together in two days, wasn't it? Woo! <laughs> <laughs>
yeah. pretty specific. Pretty specific. Yeah. Yeah. They want stuff to read in two days. Oh, I know that. <laughs> speaks well to the staff. Uh -huh. it is. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does. Um, any particular items that uh, anyone here wants to uh, talk about? Yeah, because I tried to include a summary and also what capital we were able to include and the capital that um, was asked for that didn't make it into the budget. Which were a number of things, of course. Mm -hmm. um, a number of things that didn't make it versus the ones that did is, uh, is quite uh, larger than the ones that did. Um, uh, just some, some questions in the, in the police, on the police lines, um, Kim. Um, it, it looks to me like um, in police operations, uh, we spent or anticipate spending at the end of this fiscal year uh, a little less than $800,000 um, for in the operations uh, sub-element. Uh, and, our, and we're budgeting for um, almost a million, 991,000. What, what is that increase? Um, Actually, we're... Um, what page is that on? Or where are you he's in the account? general fund. I don't know. I was making notes uh, he, <laughs> yesterday. He's, so he's in the general fund. Okay. Totals. So, I'm looking at the yeah. totals. So we're, I was looking yeah. at front page Thank total. You. Yeah. Well, there's that. So the police results. operations that um, you're, you're talking about just the department or yes. the entire? Yeah. Just the department. I, I guess I don't know what numbers you're looking at because I don't have those. Oh. The 900, well, it was, seven, it was 749,000. Yes. Was actually spent this or anticipated being spent this year. Seven ninety four. Seven ninety four. Well, the budget was eight fifty three. Right yeah. now. Budget was yeah. Eight what the other ones? Are, it's, that's the, I can tell the you. Nine ninety one is what we're budgeting for for next fiscal year. And I, I I'm just going to speak for you, Don. I believe it's because we've had, we've had so many vacancies this this past year. Um, so probably a lot of that was salary savings. Are you anticipating hiring folks to fill in those gaps in the coming year, though? I've, I've done address that. Well, originally when the budget was made last year, it was, I mean, the budget was X amount. And then as we grow closer to the end of the year and we do a budget revision, we trim out all the excess because we need it redistributed to other places within the city. And then as we project for next year, obviously we grow the budget back out to where the spots are allocated. And as we set right now, we are full. But because we're so close to the end of the year and we're only now being full, we, we don't need, from now until the end of September, we don't need the full amount because we went so long being five to seven officers down for so many months. So it is that gap between uh, the, the, the reflected in vacancies yes. that you yes. therefore vacancies save, save salaries. That. Not a good way to save salaries, yes. not, not, not any way that you want to do it. Yes, so and for that budget, for, for the budget year that we're in, um, Serena had budgeted uh, for an additional person um, inside the police department that never got filled. Okay. And that was, and that entire salary has been pulled out. So plus, all the vacancies that we had. So. Okay. All right. So, go through, real quickly. I just want to talk about the reductions on the summary page. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with the capital outlay. And that's a pretty serious reduction. And I, I want to contribute that to grants, and uh, because if you see grants, the the miscellaneous funds grew by almost a million dollars. And so, more than likely, that capital outlay carried last year actually had some grant projects funded in it. And so, you're just seeing it in a different spot. That's their grant projects. The reduction. Uh huh. And it was. Um, I guess I don't follow. The sewer line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had budgeted last year. It was, it was a million dollars sewer. Mm -hmm. I think it's one point five million actually. We had budgeted one point five million in capital outlay. That never happened. I mean, I guess in this year. And so 
So where did that money go? That just sits in the general fund? It's not money. No. It is it's anticipated grant revenue coming in. Okay, that okay I'm with you on that. Oh, I'm sorry. And then, as far as, um, I mean, do, any other questions? On well, that? yeah, then it looks like you've reduced administration. It looks like you do reduced community development. I just want to get a feel for how, how those reductions happened. In community development, uh, well, we reduced it by uh, a person. And I'm not, I'm not sure what else we, we took out of that. The economic development was also included in that as well. Economic development was in community development. Is, is now included in community development. So we reduce that 163,000. Mm -hmm. So the actual in 15 uh, was 390,000. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, actual. And we're now anticipating 226 for 16. Yes. But that's a pretty serious reduction in community development. I'm just curious where that went, how, to, how we got to that kind of reduction. In the, in the budget itself, you'll see the, the changes in community development and economic development we, we included together. And so between the two, Is mostly it's, economic development. It's uh, code enforcement transition. <coughs> I'm sorry. Code enforcement transition. Yes, and code enforcement moved out. That's right. That's pretty much two bodies that are not two mm -hmm. salaries that are not included in uh, this year's budget that were included in last year's. Code enforcement moved to police. So would that be picked up in the police? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there is, you can see there's a difference up here. So it was picked. You know, to see where it was picked. That's part of that 212,000 increase under total police is where that you just got moved from one department. I was I was curious, uh, not necessarily a budget question, but uh, on the beautification enhancement in the parks, um, that there was 200 and. Forty-five thousand was budgeted last year. That's the yeah. That's the downtown um, improvement project that the council before had said that the the sales tax that was made from Mumford and Sons could take that money and, <clears throat> and use it for a one-time project, and it's the downtown improvement project. But none of that got spent. Um, a little bit of it did this this past year, like twenty some thousand yeah. engineering for architectural fees. A lot of the uh, delay and why that's being spent is back in I think early twenty fifteen. Uh, I brought to council the uh, opportunity to apply for a grant through ODOT and ACOG, uh, and they still have yet to release that grant. And so uh, that it's a twenty eighty match. That's so the one for the circle. It, the downtown improvements, the pump house, the um, walkability, price kind of beautification. So we're waiting on that approval? We're waiting on the grant to actually be released. Okay. Uh, is there a difference between approval and release? Uh, they have not, we have not been approved. We have not even got to apply. Yeah, you got to apply first. At this point. They have not released the grant oh, for the opportunity to even apply. To even apply. Yeah. I got you. And we're, we're expecting 775000 to right. go along with the 218000 that we have budgeted. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And that is actually not being funded by the sales tax revenue that we're projecting. It is coming out of what we call fund balance because it's sales tax that we collected in uh, 2014 and that is sitting in our general fund account. And so that's how that is being funded because that's what we the council had said that that's what they wanted to use it for. Can you create an account that, you know, we're waiting on money for something else and it goes into the next fiscal year? Can you create a, a, a line item or a, a place where you can save that money? It's not stabilization, but it's, does that make sense? So we don't get in trouble for using money from the previous year. Does that make sense? Is there any way to that's what that is, have it yeah. sitting there? But that goes to the general fund and we kind of move it around to 
and and we can I mean we can restrict it mm -hmm. we have to do that by ordinance we can restrict it I don't know if that would be better or would just not matter um, as long as you guys have a budget in there and you guys approve the budget then it's going to be set in stone until you guys do anything else with the money so I just have an easier choice rather than throw it in general fund and then go, oh yeah, don't forget, we have this money. Mm -hmm. It would just allocate it and we'd know, oh yeah, that's been set aside. Mm -hmm. I just thought it'd be easier for future councils to know that. No, and it would, in case I got ran over, <laughs> yeah, would not yeah. be lost. Yeah, we know, it's just sitting there rather than on memory. So yes. is that something we can look into doing? Yeah, yeah, I've actually, I mean, I've talked about it with them. Um, our financial people to to do something like that okay. so it, so it doesn't get lost yeah okay, and because we told the people I mean that's what we told the citizens that's what we were going to do with it what do we call that what, what kind of a what do we call that one item or restricted. a restricted oh, yeah. fund uh -huh. okay yeah okay. All right. good I, I noticed uh, on the um, I think it was called vacation buyback uh, in HR that there was a significant increase in that did you consolidate is that is that consolidation from different departments all under hr is that why there's that difference uh it is consolidated all under hr yes and I, we, we somewhat of a guess but we anticipated some buybacks based on vacation or retirements within the city I mean, we don't know if those will actually happen or not happen and kim and i talked about it and we threw the dark board kind of and said this it's kind of like when we estimate for unemployment when people might you know we, we put i, I don't talk, sitting here i can't recall the unemployment number but you know we typically we, we've said that maybe two thousand for unemployment and if, if people that had worked here before and went for another job and then they lose their job we have, we're responsible for that and we have to pay it it's kind of a hit and miss in terms of how much and so but anyway we're anticipating getting back to your original question we're anticipating some some people retiring so then they're going to have a big vacation build up and so we said well we're going to have to pay for that with real dollars and that that goes in there as well as vacation buyback if that makes sense mm -hmm. okay i've got a question on stabilization fund mm -hmm. um where are we on that uh, when it comes to because i see here seven hundred seventy five thousand dollars um on the uh, general fund and then another i assume a separate account of three hundred forty seven thousand now there doesn't seem like a whole lot going to it is that because of lack of revenue uh, uh mr Fennell actually this is what he recommended we if you, in the audit that you you have, um, you'll see a line item that we owe the, the general stabilization fund five hundred sixty thousand dollars, and so um, we could reduce that by quite a bit. Um, but this is this is what he recommended, so that's the dollar amount that I put in. What what is an ordinance? How much can we accumulate? Uh, is it a million? It's no, it's, it's more than that. I mean, we're supposed to have 1.3 million. 1.3 for for now. I mean, it's going to change after every year when the, the numbers are audited. Right. And yeah. clarify how 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 much money typically goes in in a year? Or, or we have Yeah, we we haven't been putting any in it since FY13. Okay. But we we do have the funds to to at least take care of what we should have put in in FY14. Okay. And so, you know, if we can, you know, stay a year behind and just continue to put in, then we'll eventually get caught up where we're supposed to be. <laughs> okay. And how much was that in FY14? 240 ish a Quarter of a fire truck. Yeah. But, um, but it, it will stay on our books that we owe that fund, and it is set by ordinance. Now, so 1.3, is that counting uh, general fund plus? That's, just, that's just general fund. Okay. Yeah. How about the uh, public works? Yeah. Okay. So that's 347. Is yeah. that also 1.3 as a max? No, or? no. Um, it's it's quite a bit less than that, okay. and I, I I don't know the number. We don't usually have very much money left out of GPWA to transfer over. So. So are we kind of looking at is like whatever's left over we'll throw in this fund? It is. It's based off our audited numbers. It's okay. so it's not just whatever we have left. It just seems like, you know, because we look at uh, 
14, uh, 3,800. What we propose, we're looking at $4,000 to put in there. That's just off interest. That's off interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the ordin original ordinance would tell us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's a complicated um, formula that I wouldn't even begin, I, can't, I couldn't explain it to you. <laughs> it's very complicated. So how did an ordinance get passed if it can't be explained? I believe our financial advisor is the one who helped put it together. And he, I mean, he can explain it to you. And I think he has. Um, yeah, so we, we yeah. Talk. it is complicated. It's, and it's hard to remember exactly yeah. what the numbers were and how we about went about it. So all right, well Bruce can fix that. <laughs> no problem. I'll figure it out. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll the, cl clearly, the uh, establishment of a fund, stabilization fund, um, rainy day fund, if you will, uh, is uh, is uh, essential, yes. and, uh, and and we're moving continually moving towards it. So that's uh, that's very positive. Uh, and uh, regardless of how complicated the calculation is, at least we're moving in the right direction. Uh, we uh, have uh, have got a 6:30 appointment downstairs for uh, a little uh, reception for our new city manager. Um, just uh, we can we have a couple of different options on this uh, on, our, on our budget. This isn't going to be the last time we discuss it, obviously. Um, we could uh, suspend and come back after this city council meeting uh, this evening uh, for further discussion. Again, probably not be the last time. Uh, or uh, we could look at a, uh, a, a separate uh, special council meeting, uh, if so desired. Um, well, can, I make, can I make a recommend? Because Bruce mentioned that he's going to be going through it over the course of Nice if you guys are few, I'd love to have another workshop just for the fact that I'll be going out with all the department heads over the next two weeks. And as I go through, I'll be carrying along my budget and asking questions about the infrastructure we have, the personnel we have, and also the projects that they're wanting to get complete in this upcoming year and in future years. And at that point, Tom, as I go through there, I'll know it in detail. So when you guys have your questions, uh, we'll have more than uh, just Kim answering your questions. I should be yeah. able to answer your questions at that point in time. So, and the communications that uh, all of us have uh, on a daily basis as we get to know each other and build a relationship. Uh, hopefully, I can implement that back in the budget because that uh, is where it comes back to on a yearly basis. That no matter what we do and how we do it, it all comes back to the ink that's on the paper in that yearly fiscal year budget. So, well, and correct me if I'm wrong. So next uh, council. Fiscal, fiscal year 16. I mean, this is the first time we've really seen all these numbers. Uh, we're going to see this, you know, and we're going to keep. And you're going to have a whole presentation on it, I assume. I mean. Right down the road, so I mean we're yeah, we'll be putting again. Together. Yeah, we'll that's be, my point. Yeah, we'll be putting together the, the summary for you. I'll be putting together uh, the highlights uh, as I see it that I want you guys uh, to recognize. And but any questions you guys have, uh, please feel free to let me know what they are, and we'll try to address those all at a singular time, so uh, we can all hear it at, at one time together. So we so. can. I mean, we can put this on the 18th as a, as a workshop item. Um, but, you know, September the next one is after that is, uh, is the public hearing. Public hearing. Yeah. Uh, and you can adopt the budget that same night. Correct. And, and that, let's not forget, we'll be seeing it all year long, too. So it's yeah. not like it's going anywhere. So it can be a minute at any point in time, even after it's passage. So I think definitely oh, it put can on a workshop. Yeah. 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 Definitely put on a workshop. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Then we will make sure that we have this as the number one item on the next workshop. Uh, and uh, we'll go from, go from there. There are a number of things that we are building up, folks, in our, in our workshop inventory of topics to cover. Uh, the minutes, I think, had six or seven that are, that are already uh, on the list. We've got the, the sales tax uh, item that we need to uh, deal with, um, with some urgency, uh, and, uh, and a, a personal issue of of our water situation, not quite as urgent with the rainfall, but still something that we need to be dealing with. So anyway, we're we're starting to develop a backlog of of topics that we need to handle. So uh, can we not have a workshop off of council, off council night? Sure, we could. Sure, we that's can. what we need to sure do. We can just do it. Meeting. We can. We can. That's what I said. We can have a special meeting just to talk about the budget and other uh, urgent things. Um, sales tax, whatever. Uh, that's certainly, some, certainly something we can consider too. We'll need to get uh, um, a look at people's schedules to do that. 
make sure we have everybody everybody here. Okay. okay. But uh, what I'm hearing is that you would rather do that rather than suspend and come back uh, this evening. Uh, and with that, we're adjourned.